Philippians uh, chapter 3 verses 17 through 21. Let us pray. Father I ask that your word would dwell in us richly that we would overflow with your word. I pray Father your word will become our only standard for our lives. So we thank you for what you're about to do and pray this in Jesus name. Amen. Join with others in following my example, brothers, and take note of those who live according to the pattern we gave you. For as often told you before, and now say again, even with tears, many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their destiny is destruction, their God is their stomach, and their glory is in their shame. Their mind is on earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a Savior from there the Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enables Him to bring everything under His control will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like His glorious body. This is the Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I don't suppose this 
headline is any news to anybody. The world is in a mess. All we have to do is listen to the news. Uh, this recent shooting in the suburb of Chicago on July 4th and just everything. And, and it kind of brings up a couple of questions. Where is our society headed? Where is our society headed? And, and what has led to this mess? Well, I offer this simple answer, and that is it's sin. Sin is defined as missing the mark that God intended. Sin is not putting God first. Sin is not obeying God's commandments. Now, I think it's pretty evident humans have sought to live their lives independently of God, and I think we're doing a pretty good job of it. But the problem is, is that working out? Or how is that working out? I think we see that all the time. And, and some people might ask Christians, well, why doesn't God do something? I submit God has done something. God came to earth in the person of Jesus Christ to deal with the mess of the world, the mess that sin has caused. He died on the cross, was resurrected and ascended and sits today at the right hand of God the Father to intercede for us. And, and we call that good news. Good news. The world is in a mess, but God has dealt with the mess. Now, if, if people would turn to Jesus, make Jesus their cornerstone, we submit that their, the mess in their lives can be dealt with. So that brings up another issue then. How will people know about the transforming work of Jesus for their lives? Because Jesus is not here in person to speak to them, to reveal the good news. But Jesus has put something in place. Jesus has called the church into existence to bring the good news, to be the messengers of the good news, to be His representatives, His ambassadors, to tell them that if they turn to Jesus, the mess can be dealt with. This is where we come in. Because if we read the New Testament with any integrity, we realize that God's intention is that His church, which is not this building, the church is you and I. That we, He calls us to spread the good news, to be involved in the life transforming message of Jesus Christ. God is calling us to influence others. I've, I've entitled this Christian Influencers. Christian Influencers. Now just to remind us what the, uh, the definition is of an influence, the power or capacity to cause an effect in an individual in indirect ways. The power to cause some effect in someone else's life in an indirect way. We, we don't get them in a headlock and say, you're going to church. We, we influence them in other ways. We do not have to change the entire world. We're called to influence the part of the world that we're in. The part of the world that's made up with the people around us, the people that we interact with, the people that God brings into our lives. We're going to spend a few weeks kind of looking at what it means to be a Christian influencer. And, and I submit this could be one of the most exciting and important things that we've looked at because I believe it will help us see our lives in a whole new way being a Christian influencer. And I believe that the Bible is clear that God expects us to live our lives in that way. I mean, think about this. We're going to interact with people anyway, aren't we? We're going to interact with people no matter what. Unless you're a hermit and you don't see anybody, you're going to interact with people. So why not interact in a way that influences them for the kingdom of God? So how do we do that, you ask? Well, again, we do it by the way we live our lives, the way we treat other people. And that's it. That's how simple our mission is. The way we live our lives, the way we treat other people. In other words, we 
influence people by the way that we live our lives. You know, as, as I've thought about the future, you know, our mantra of what do we do in 22 now that our building is, is essentially finished, now what? And, and God keeps bringing me back to this idea of it's how we interact with people wherever we are. That's our mission field. Wherever you are, you're a missionary. Living our lives in such a way that the world sees what Jesus has done in our lives. Listen to what Jesus said in Matthew 5, beginning in verse 14. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, in the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. We shine a light on what it means to be a Christ follower. As we read just a moment ago in Philippians, Paul writes, Join together in following my example. Just as you have us as a model, keep your eyes on those who live as we do. And that could be a daunting task to be an example, can't it? You know, uh, the other thing I had thought about saying today, and I, uh, Paul starts most of his letters with, to the saints at Ephesus, to the saints at Colossae, to the saints at Pimento. <laughs> if you think about calling yourself a saint, you oh, no, no, no. But he calls us that. He calls us that. We're saints, not because of anything we've done, but, but by Christ imputing His righteousness onto us. So we let our light shine on what it means to be a Christian. And we change the world, or our part of it, by being an example. The people we interact with, the people that we live near, even the people who watch us when we don't even know. How do we live our lives? We let them see the influence that Christ has made in our lives. A few weeks back we, we studied some passages in Titus. Uh, Paul wrote to this young pastor as he left uh, him in charge on the island of Crete to supervise the church there. And here are some of the things that he encouraged. He said to Titus, live in such a way that our lives reflect the best principles of living in line with the gospel. Let your life reflect the best principles of living in line with the gospel. He said, encourage others to live in such a way that no one has anything bad to say about them. Live in such a way that they will make the teaching about God our Savior attractive. That's what it means to be a Christian influencer. We point people to Jesus. Isaiah 49.6, God spoke through Isaiah and said this, I will also make you a light for the Gentiles that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. God's intention for the Jewish nation was to be a light that pointed and led and illuminated what it means to be a God follower. So he, God calls us to be a light for others to know Him. Now we must make sure that the light that we shine is reflective of Jesus, that it points people to Jesus and not us. Paul gives us this motivation in 1 Corinthians 11, 1. Follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. So we're to live in such a way that we shine the light on what Jesus has done for us. This is how we influence others for Christ. We simply let uh, Christ shape our action. We, we let the love of Jesus so fill us up that it spills out to others around us. That's, that's how we deal with people. And, and we even can evidence Christ in our lives when we mess up. And and, and we will. How do we, how do we handle those times when we, when we mess up? 
when we humble ourselves and seek forgiveness and, and, and apologize and, and do all those things that, that make it evident that we're a work in progress. We are not there yet. John Wesley called it going on to perfection. That every day, every day should be an example that Christ has done some change in our lives. You know, Jesus uh, is, is who we live for, who we follow. You know, every day we make a choice in how we're going to live. And we can live being guided by our self-focused nature, or we can be led by the Holy Spirit. See, only when we've given our lives to Jesus, and the rest of us too, can we live, as, live this life as a Christian influencer. Because here's the thing, Jesus is our example. Jesus is our guide because Jesus is our Savior and Jesus is our Lord. Before He ascended, as recorded in Acts 1.8, Jesus said to His followers, He said, You will be My witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to all the parts of the world. And it's interesting, the word witness is the word we get the word martyr for. Now when you hear the word martyr, you think of someone most likely who has given their life for some cause. And, and the first Christians, especially those who lived in Rome, because of the persecution there, did give their lives. Because Christ has so impacted their lives, they were willing to risk their lives to point people to Jesus. But the English translation doesn't say that. It says witnesses. And in fact that is what it means. The one who has seen something with their own eyes. Something with your own eyes. Something you've experienced. When you're a witness in a courtroom you testify to what you have seen and what you know. So we're witnesses to what Christ has done in our lives. And what He can do for others as well. So when we have been deeply affected by Jesus as we follow Him, our lives can be a, a shining light. We can influence other people. We do that in the way we live our lives. So I guess here's, here's the question. Are you ready to make a difference in the world? Are you ready to see your daily activities, the words you say, the things you do, be an, have an impact in the world? Are you ready to see change happen in the lives of others? I think we all know people that, that we're, we've been praying for and we want to see them have a relationship with Jesus. And so, are you ready to be a Christian influencer? To live your life in such a way that uh, when you let Jesus lead you, this is what's going to happen. See, it'll make all the difference both for now and for eternity. I think people realize, especially when they watch the news and hear of these things, that things aren't working. Things aren't working right now. And, and they're, they're looking for something. They're looking for something. They're looking for an alternative to a way of life that is not working. They're looking for a truth that will transform their lives. When John Wesley in the, the late 1700s sent Thomas Coke as a bishop to come to America and especially to, uh, uh, to anoint and uh, empower uh, Francis Asbury, John said this to Thomas Coke, Offer them Christ, Thomas. Offer them Christ. And we do that. We can do that in words, and we can do it in how we live our lives. That's why we've been here all these years, listening, learning, for a purpose. You know, practice. Uh, cross country is going to start back up, football and volleyball and all those sports and basketball and all those. You're practicing for what? Just to practice? You're practicing for a game. So folks, this is, this is the halftime talk. <laughs> Get ready to go back out there today 
tomorrow, next week. I don't know. But as I said, we're all going to interact with people, aren't we? Every single day you interact with somebody. Do you let the light of Christ shine in your words and your actions? And so here's the gospel. Jesus died for us. That's what atonement means. He gave himself for us. And what he asks is that we have no other master. That he is our, he is our master. He is our Lord. And so we go out every day to live for him. If you sang that song from your heart, then you've given your life to Jesus. That's your, that's your invitation. So here's, the, here's the, uh, the question now. Are you ready to make a difference in the world? Because Christ calls us to be Christian influencers. Are you ready to be a Christian influencer? Go with the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit to be a Christian influencer. Amen. Go in peace.